When it comes to fearsome creatures that lurk beneath the waves, sharks have long held the upper hand in everything from horror movie casting to real-life beachside nightmares, but they're not, of course, the only deadly predators at the top of the underwater food chain. Just last week, some surfers beat a hasty retreat to dry land after having a close encounter with a pod of killer whales off of Vancouver Island. Tonight, ABC's Tanya Rivero brings us a look at what happens when killer whales take on killer sharks to be king of the sea. The great white shark and the killer whale. Creatures of mythic proportions, but they come with vastly different on-screen personas. The fearsome Jaws versus gentle giant Free Willy. Yeah! But in reality, the killer whale is anything but gentle. Both shark and whale are pure and deadly hunters, the top of the aquatic food chain. Both built for the kill, but very different animals. Killer whales are very social organisms. They have very stable family units. Great white sharks, they're more solitary animals. Differences that become most evident during the hunt. Enter the sea lion, 1,000 pounds of muscle and teeth Surprisingly ferocious and agile, not an easy target. The shark is cautious. It waits for an opportunity because it only gets one shot. The shark jumps. If it misses, the sea lion easily escapes. They'll look for animals in shallower waters or more vulnerable situations. It's often by surprise attack. And then, you know, they'll drive through and lunge at the prey and, and wound it and then, you know, attempt to kill it and consume it. What surprises many is that it is actually harder to survive a pod of killer whales than escape from a great white. These killer whales have spotted their prey on a block of ice. With chilling precision, they line up and strike, using their tails to create a wave. It's too small and the sea lion is able to cling to the ice, but the pod is patient and determined. After repeated attacks, the sea lion cannot hold on. It is held underwater till it drowns. Killer whales have very different and highly adapted foraging techniques. They will feed in, in a very coordinated fashion. For the hunt, sharks rely on instinct, but young whales practice. When a seal is caught, it is carried out to the pod, where the young learn the art of killing. And for the killer whale, it is an art that is constantly evolving. They adapt to certain conditions and then proliferate those behaviors through time and then pass them on. It's like cultural transmission. It's learned behavior that they're passing on from generation to generation. At 30 feet long, weighing 20,000 pounds, it is an eating machine, sometimes even consuming other whales. We've seen killer whales attack all sorts of other baleen whales. It's just part of their prey. This gray whale, another giant of the sea, is no match for the orca, its only predator, save for humans. But what happens when the killer whale and the great white turn on each other? These ancient enemies sometimes go after the same prey, hunting sea lions head to head. With blood in the water, this shark is bold, but then the whale strikes its competition. They're striking animals. How fast? they can move when they actually make the determination to attack their prey is remarkable. The shark is stunned, then held upside down till he suffocates. The victors feast. In the end, this collision of killers is no contest. With its massive strength and adaptive intelligence, the orca has no equal at sea. I'm Tanya Rivero for Nightline in New York. And the next episode of Built for the Kill airs Monday, March 4th on Nat Geo Wild.